Hello friends, welcome back to Java 8 interview question. In this video, we'll talk about Java 8 stream API functions, right? So as I mentioned here, we'll talk about non-terminal operations. We'll talk about terminal operations and we'll also talk about short circuit operations. All right, so let's begin the video. Now I have mentioned most of the functions here that we are going to cover in this video. Uh, if I talk about uh, the broad category of Java 8 stream functions, we have categorized those functions into two categories. One is intermediate operation. Second one is terminal operations. Now intermediate operations produces another stream as a result. The outcome of intermediate operation is going to be a another stream. For example, filter. So if I apply a filter on my input stream, filter function will generate another stream as a result of it. Right. So all the intermediate operations will generate another stream as a result. But terminal operation operations will give you the final result. So the final result could be an integer value, could be a double value, could be an array or could be on your requirement. Right. So like uh, we'll talk about all of the functions in this video now so first of all let's go and talk about the now here let's talk about filter so filter as you can see here it takes a predicate what is a predicate predicate is a predefined functional interface so basically you will pass a condition into your filter function so filter function will return a stream consisting of the elements of this stream that matches the given predicate so for example you will have your input stream you will apply a filter filter function will give you another stream satisfying this particular condition so all the elements satisfying this particular condition for example you have an integer list and you want to fetch the elements which are greater than 5 right so after applying filter operation you will get another stream which will have all the elements greater than 5 okay next function is map what it does so basically map helps you in applying some business logic here you can use map to convert the data type as well. For example, you can pass an object and you can return an integer value or a string value as well. Right. So what map does it returns a stream consisting of the result of applying the given function. You will specify a function here. So basically here you write your logic function to the elements of this stream so maps. As I told you, all the non terminal operations will result another stream. So there are the different variants of map available like map to double is there and then map to integer is there. All, all right. Now the next one is flat maps. So flat maps comes into picture when you have when your input stream has got another stream. For example, you have a you have a list of orders, right? So you can convert your list of orders into a stream and then you can apply your operation. But now what if your list of orders, your order has got another list of items and you need to fetch the list list of all the items. Are you getting me? You have a product list like a list of order order list you have and each single list can have multiple items. So basically my order one has got three items. Order one, order two has got four items. Order three has got five items. So basically my input stream has another stream into it. Correct. So flat map helps you in converting a single stream and then you can apply your business logic on top of it. So I will explain flat map in in the coming videos where I will take one of the good example and I will explain in the next video in a better manner. But for now you can think like flat map is basically helps you in converting your multiple streams into one stream. Okay. Now there are different variants of flat map available. Flat map to double is there. Flat map to int. Flat map to long. Similar to the map function, flat map also takes a function which is a predefined functional interface as input. All right. Now the next one is distinct uh, as the name suggests what it does. It basically gives you a list of unique elements. Sorry, it will give you a stream of unique elements sorted. So this is just to short your input data or input elements in your natural sorting. Okay, so you just want to apply a natural sorting on the input set of data. You can simply call the sorted function and the result is going to be a stream, a sorted stream basically. Sorted stream into the natural sorting order. 
but in case if you want to change the order you can also pass a comparator so there is a one more variant of this particular function available which is sorted and but the input parameter input argument is going to be a comparator so you can pass a comparator to do the comparison so to change the sorting order as per your need all right next one is peak so peak is going like it is one of the very handy function you cannot directly use peak but it comes into picture when you want to debug the when you want to see the intermediate result for example if you guys have seen my very first video i have explained when i was talking about the stream pipeline flow i have explained that you cannot apply multiple operations on the same input stream right but in case if you want to see the result the result of intermediate stream you can make use of peak so for example here is i have my filtered stream i have applied a map now i want to see the the data elements after applying this particular function so i can use peak and then i'm i can print the, those values so basically it comes into picture when you want to debug when you want to see the intermediate results of your stream all right i will give, i'll give you an example in the demo section maybe in the next video all right now the next one is skip so as the name suggest what it does it will skip the n elements from your input stream from your input stream for example you have a stream of 10 integer numbers the count you will specify here right so initial n elements from your input string all right now the next one is limit what it does limit is basically is used to break the infinite generation of elements so for example i will explain this limit in the uh, in the next slide but for now you just understand limit is basically used to limit to control the number of elements that you want to generate okay okay yeah here so here you see that there are two functions one is called generate and one is called iterate so these two functions we use to generate an infinite sequence of elements so you can use generate function and iterate function to produce your own stream but these two function generates a stream of infinite sequence right so put so to break this particular infinite loop we use limit for example i want to generate a I want to generate a stream of integer number but I just want to have elements 100 so what I can do is I will use generate function then I will use dot limit and then I'll pass the count okay 100 I want to have 100 elements similarly iterate is also there but the only difference between generate and iterate is that generate will give you an unordered stream but iterate will give you a sequential like a sequential data 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that right so we use limit with these two functions to break the infinite loop all right now so here we are done with the known terminal operations the thing which you need to keep in mind that each single known terminal operation produces another stream as the result of it right now let's talk about terminal operations so the very first one is min what it does you specify a comparator so if you see here i am passing uh, my comparator so what it does this will give you the minimum element of this string as per the comparator again same max is easy you will pass your comparator so you here you will pass your logic what do you want to do so it will come back it will return you an element of the maximum element from the input stream okay count simply it will gives you the number of elements in the stream now now the next one is for each if you see here for each it takes a consumer what is a consumer consumer is a predefined functional interface so for each function it performs an action it performs an action for each element of the stream so you have your input stream you call for each function so for each will apply whatever function you will mention here right so for each loop will apply the same operation to all the elements of the input stream the very simple example for example you want to print the list of all your uh, the elements of your input stream you can call for each function and then you write your print statement i believe you guys know what is a consumer consumer takes an argument as an input but it does not return any value correct next one is for each ordered now the next one is for each ordered so this comes into picture for example if i use a parallel stream and if i call a for each function the result come will not be in the same order if i use for each 
now if i am using a parallel stream and i want the result to be in order i will go and use for each ordered function so the result is going to be in the fixed order in parallel stream so we'll talk about more in the demo section in the next videos to array it simply returns an array containing the elements of the stream for example you have an input stream you have applied some logic and you want the result in a array you can call the to array function okay next one is reduce reduce is basically like one of the very handy function so what it does you will pass some operation you will pass binary operator right here accumulator so reduce will apply the logic on on all the elements of the input stream and it will give you a final result now there are three variants of reduce available to us one is reduce with simply a binary operator for example you can take binary operator like it, it will take two argument as input and then it will do the operation whatever you want to do. for example you want to sum the list of all the elements of your integer stream so you can call a binary operator reduce second variant it takes an identity so identity is going to be your initial value like for example you want to initialize with zero or with one and then you put your binary operator here right so in case if your stream is null you will get the identity as the result the value which you define the initial value will be your result and then there is one more called reduce with an identity again it is my initial value by function so it will have my partial result and then is there is going to be a, a combiner so this one comes into picture when you are working with the parallel stream when you have multiple streams and then you want to combine the result of multiple streams into one so we'll talk about each variant in the next video okay so the basic idea of having reduced function is that it will perform a reduction on the elements of the input stream okay now next one is collect so collect is one of the very good function it helps you in getting your final result so you can collect the result either in an array or in a list so for example collect then you will use collectors dot and then there are multiple functions available to it like as list as double value right so basically collect operation it helps you in getting your result in collecting your result in the format you want you can collect as a string you can collect as list or as double now the next one is all match what it does here as you can see it takes a predicate predicate in the sense basically there will be a condition so if all the elements of your input string matches or satisfies this particular predicate or a condition you will get true else you will get false right so all the elements of your input stream should satisfy this particular condition then only you will get true any match so it returns whether any element of this stream match the provided predicate for example any match is like you have an input string or input stream having 1 to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and you want to put a condition num any any element of this string is greater than 5 or not so correct so if any element satisfies this particular condition you will get true simple next one is none match so it returns true if none of the element of your input stream satisfies this particular condition for example i have same input string 1 to 10 and i want to put a logic here that okay if any of the element is less than 0 give me true right so because 1 to 10 there is no element which is less than 0 so there will not be any match to this particular predicate so you will get true as a result okay now next one is find any and find first so these two operations are used so basically here you will pass a condition in find any and find first so this will go and try to find an element matching to this particular condition so you will pass a condition here in find any and in find first so it will give you the result if there is any matching element or satisfying to this particular condition now there is a slight difference both of the functions works same find any and find first both works exactly in a same manner but the only difference is going to be find first for example if you have uh, elements 1 to 10 and you want to find first element greater than 5 right so we know like 1 to 10 6 is the element which is greater than 5 so my find first will always give me 6 because the very first element from my stream from my input string is 6 which is greater than 5 but find any it will give any element you cannot predict the result 
find any will just go and fetch any element from your string which is greater than 5 so it could return 6 it could return 7 it could return something so it depends on the system on the compiler how it works you cannot uh, predict the result of find any right so find any you cannot uh, predicate the outcome of find any function and the result is going to be an optional element an optional so if you guys are uh, new to optional we have already covered optional in the one of the video i will share the link in the description box you can go through it okay api functions all right so here we are done with this particular video the idea behind this particular video is to give you a quick walkthrough of the java 8 stream api functions thank you for watching Please do subscribe my channel.